I'm here. It's Callaway Live. You will hear from the audience not applauding. It's not live. There's no audience. But this is the season for a recap of Callaway Live. And the reason we like to do this is we get a lot of people that say, hey, don't want to watch any of those episodes. Just sum it up and give us a recap. So that's what this is. I'm going to have some of the folks that help put this show together up here in the next five to 55 minutes. And we're going to talk about some of our favorite moments from Callaway Live. And I'm going to tip it off with one of my favorite moments. And you'll notice there's no editing on this show. We're not going to edit any of this. One of my favorite moments from season one was our premiere. And I like to put people on the show that are business leaders, especially ones that are from companies you've never heard of. And this is Eddie Q, who's from Apple Computer. They make computers <laughs> from Apple. <laughs> Here's season one, Eddie Q. How has the organization changed around you, and how have you changed with the organization over that, that period of time? Because it's it, the, obviously the company that is today and you today are not the, the guy that started there. No, but, you know, the, the fundamentals have never changed for us, which is we, we've always been trying to make products that change the world. And, and sometimes they can change them in a big way. Sometimes it changes them in a small way. But we've always really focused on trying to create these products that, really people could use and the experience of them using it would be very different. It wasn't just technology, there was an art to it, the way it felt, the way it looked, uh, everything about it. And so that hasn't changed. What's changed is the numbers, right? It used to be that you'd walk around and if you saw somebody on a Mac, it was like, oh, there's the, the weird dude or something, because there weren't that many people. Now you kind of look still around. We have those guys up here. <laughs> Yeah. What we what, what's changed is that everyone now has realized that these products are amazing and great. And now you look around and it's everyone has one of our products. I remember the first time I was on a, I was flying. To, I was going to take a flight to San Francisco at the airport, and I was sitting down with my wife and my small little kids, and we were taking a red eye to Miami, and I looked around and there were all these people with iPods and Macs, and for the first time I'm like, my God, wow, we like. It's really changed. Like our products are everywhere, and uh, it was it was it was it's amazing to have been there the whole well, time. Probably. All right, welcome back. I'm Harry Arnett, and I'm here with the guys that actually bring the show into your living rooms every single Tuesday. So, uh, first of all, thank you for invading our our viewers' li living rooms. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's be honest; it's not really their living rooms; it's more their basements. More yeah. Places, yeah. Probably. Or somebody yeah. else's basement. We got Mark, Chris, <laughs> Scott, and Sean. And hey, <laughs> thanks for getting dressed up, by the way. What is, yeah, well, hey, you, know, you know, you guys get the email. We're gonna be doing big. a little show today. We're, we're more comfortable behind the camera. Yeah. Right? Hey, honey, yeah. have you seen my quarter zip? We got a show today. <laughs> but our first, our first block. Um, of highlights we wanted to show was we like to have tour players on the show. Golf company, golf show, yeah. golfers. See how I did that, Mark? <laughs> Bringing them all together. And uh, we had some really cool golfers on the, um, we on did. the old program this year. PGA Tour legend Tom Watson for a guy who's basically done everything you can do in the game of golf um, had just an incredible depth and breadth of stories, never one to repeat himself, always unique, always interesting. I love that one. He was talking about his first shot ever on Lynx Golf, mm -hmm. which actually sounded a lot like the first shot I hit on any time I played. <laughs> but then, hey, Villardo, by the way, I like the headset. Yeah. Who are you I, talking I, to you on that headset? <laughs> well, it's, it's a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all right. We're all with that. Take a look at yourself in the monitor right there. <laughs> I've been trying to yeah. suck. I've been focused on sucking my stomach <laughs> in this entire <laughs> time. That I don't know how you do it on these shows. Okay, no, <laughs> never look shape. at the monitor. Is, never yeah. look at the monitor. So, uh, what was your favorite moment from our golfers that we had? It is the question. Are you getting the answer? <laughs> <laughs> are you back? Are you talking in the booth? This is I know. Okay. <laughs> I was surprised it took so long to bring up the fact that I was wearing a headband. That's what I was going to say. Uh, so what, what, what you <laughs> I was like, what? We what literally have one thing to do on the show oh, this year. Uh, Sergio. Sergio oh. was my favorite golfer. I mean, uh, it was a great show. Energy was great. He was here. It was a big employee meeting that day. He came, greeted everybody. His wife, beautiful wife, came. Pregnant, beautiful wife at the time. Um, She's not beautiful anymore. <laughs> no. What a jerk. And, uh, and I always love seeing Sergio. I mean, he always remembers me from when I almost hit him in the head yes. with the golf ball. The I have that on video. Right. We should, we should so actually. He always laughs about it when he sees me, and I'm always embarrassed. So That was not your most athletic moment <laughs> no. when you tossed the ball to Sergio no. at that time. Mm -hmm. But one of my favorite moments was the newlywed game that we did with him and how yeah, synced up great. they were. I accused them of cheating after the, after the fact. 
And they said, no, it was all legit. But their newlywed game thing was phenomenal. How about you, Gore? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Another fun uh, moment was when Xander Schauffele was here. So he's a great guy. It was really fun listening to him talk about getting into uh, rhythm of things on the PGA Tour. And uh, But we, it was a good sport when we did the spelling bee with other uh, PGA pros. Um, and we brought up a, a random employee picked out of the audience. <laughs> and, uh, and he was a good sport, too. That was, that was a lot of fun. Can you spell Schauffele? Uh, oof, S. What was your favorite H. moment? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, mine was, uh, was Rob Blake. Uh, not know, a tour music player. Mogul. So I like how you did yeah. that. Not yeah. a tour player. Not a tour but, yeah. player, you know, but uh, definitely one of my favorite. You know, I enjoy music, and he had a lot of insight into the music industry, stuck around for a while answering questions, and just, you know, genuinely nice guy. Yeah, Rob really great. got a good insight into what it takes to... Uh, be in the industry. So through the magic of be. editing, yeah. we're going to throw all of those highlights yeah. that the guys mentioned. Since you didn't have anything specific, we'll just go ahead and show the entire Rob Light episode in this oh. highlight package. But this is a conglomeration of all the highlights mm. <laughs> that our well-dressed panel had for, <laughs> for season four. Do you have a lot of the players now ask you about Lynx Golf and how to embrace it? Because what you described about the mentality of how to be successful there could be something that a lot of the younger guys don't necessarily embrace. You may hit a good shot where your true Vist golf ball, see what I did there, might roll <laughs> into a depression well, that, you, that you don't warrant the, the result that you got. Well, the, you know, that, that's the thing. The, the luck of the bounce comes into play. That's what I didn't like about it at first. And, uh, but, yeah, the, you know, the, 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 as they say, and it's, just, it's not a cliche, but the bounces, you know, they, they, uh, they even out. You know, I had you know, in 2009 at uh, Turnberry. I mean, I had I had it you know, when that ball was coming down in the last shot in the 18th hole, 72nd hole. It was coming down and covering the flag. I, I kind of had you know, I had a flashback to 77 when the same thing happened at 77 for my last shot of the 18th hole at Turnberry when I beat Nicholas. And when they came down there like this, it, I really couldn't see much. It hit the green and cheers went up like this, and all of a sudden, oh. <laughs> That was me. You heard me in my yeah, living room. It went over the green, and uh, you know, I failed to get it up and down. Got in the playoff with Stuart Sink, and he had every shot great, and I didn't hit a single shot, maybe one good shot in the, in the playoff, and he won. But uh, It's the most mad I've ever been at, like, a really nice guy <laughs> at Stuart Sink. Stuart's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. What article of non-golf clothing does Sergio wear that you really wish you could throw away forever? <laughs> Of, was it the leather jacket he wore when we saw him in uh, in, in December? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, Sergio wears a lot of T-shirts with like superheroes and things <laughs> on them. Superhero T-shirts. He, yeah, he he rocks them well. I yeah. tell him to like throw a blazer yeah, all yeah, over yeah. it. Superhero so, yeah. T-shirt. I can we'll understand put, we'll that. We'll put that or his yeah. funny graphic T-shirts. Yeah. Superhero T-shirt. Sergio, what would Angela say? The article of non-golf clothing do you wear that she wishes that she could throw away? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I think she likes most of the things I wear. Um, but uh, one one T-shirt comes to mind. My, <laughs> I can't really throw it. I mean, she's kind of... She loves you. She's not throwing it away. She's mentioned it a couple of times, but my brother gave it to me, so. Uh, I wouldn't but actually it's... throw it away. <laughs> I mean, if you chose to get rid of it, I wouldn't be sorry. Uh, <laughs> so I think it's a, a Dragon Ball uh, shirt that with Son Goku on it and the uh, Dragon no, Ball. No, we're in we're in super t-shirts. I think we're gonna accept them. Yeah. Because that was such a specific geeky answer that we're going to give that to you because we don't know what that is. Tonight on Callaway Live, our very first ever Callaway Professional Golfer Spelling Bee. Here we go. Ollie Schneider Jans. Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. L L. L L. I E. I E. Perfect. <laughs> uh, we, let's just do S S Ollie. Ollie. S, S, S C. It's Snickerdoodle, that's what I call him. S, C, right. S C H N I E D E Schneider. E R Jans. J A N S. Oh!
Do you have the sense now just from your experience of being able to see that like immediately? I mean, the two examples you gave um, seem to be that, but I, you I, probably have I, a team around you. I, well, I have a, a bunch of great young agents, uh, a whole team, young, middle-aged, all over. And, and I hire people partially because I hope they have great taste uh, and the ability to recognize talent and the ability to help talent grow. Because part of our job is to sit with them and say, hey, make this move, do this event. This is a good look for you. Um, it's not a perfect science, it's, it's like anything, but if you've done it enough, you have comparisons. So you can tell someone who's connecting with an audience, you know when someone's really a good guitar player, you know when a song is great. Um, and I'm smart enough to know I don't know every genre of music, so when EDM broke, I electronic dance music, for those of you who don't know what it is. No, they're all high, they know uh, what it is. Um, <laughs> Uh, I hired a bunch of agents who lived in that space because they would know good from bad. And so I trusted their instincts. And that's, there's a lot of trust involved. And, and I don't expect anybody to even bat 500. You know, you do your best and if you believe in something, that's where it starts. But you, so you sort of have like a portfolio theory, I guess, in terms of, um, at some level of getting an artist you think might have the it factor. And then there are unicorns that break through, right? Well, there are unicorns that break through, but you're also looking at who's around it. Has some, has a great manager gotten involved, like Irving? Is a record company made a bet on it? Has some publicist seen it? Has it gotten reviews? Um, uh, you know, I, I've had the privilege to work with Zach Brown now for almost 14 years. When we signed Zach, <clears throat> he was selling out a thousand seats a night in Atlanta. There was something going on. The rest of the country didn't know who he was, but you could go to Atlanta and go, oh my God, something's going on. There's something happening. Um, and of course now the whole world has figured it out. With 21 Pilots, you know, to sit in a room with 200 kids, they've never played New York and they don't have a record out and everyone's singing their songs, something's going on. And that's what I'm looking for, those, those sort of moments. And look at that, through the magic of over-the-top television, our panel has changed. We now have Tyler and Tony and Lex, and hey, I like that you guys unied up for this one. We, uh, we, we actually got the memo. Got the, uh, the memo. Yeah. Well, the last clowns showed up yeah. like wearing their you know worst outfits of the week for this show, but laundry I like day. that you guys- Gotta wrap the show. Up. I love laundry. what you have on. But uh, so what were some of your, I know what yours is gonna be. <laughs> what were some of your favorite moments from uh, from this season? Well, what was amazing was the, um, the quality of good guests we had throughout the whole season uh, as a murderer's row if you will. Right, well as, as the guy that it has to try to pump up the crowd yes before the show it's always a lot easier when you have guests that the crowd is already pumped up about and we had a bunch of those this year uh, I think my favorite was Bill Simmons ah, yes um, just because I, I don't even have a particular moment but um, hearing you know he doesn't do a lot of interviews and hearing about how he built his very much his empire was was fascinating. I liked it too, cause him especially, because he really got the point of this show immediately. Right. A lot of times we'll have guests on and we spend time explaining to them what the show is, how we like to do it, why, why the guests are on, why they're on, right. and some of the topics we like to talk about. But he really got it because he's been a pioneer in this type of content for years and years and years. Right, he, I mean, he's an interview pro and he was a pro at getting interviewed. And I am well. an interview <laughs> pro. Right. And uh, I'm also a travel pro. <laughs> <laughs> but so that, I agree with you. How about you, Tom? Uh, I was a big fan of the Traeger Grills, uh, Jeremy Andrus, for two reasons. One, you like to eat. Love to eat. Big <laughs> yeah. food guy. Yeah. So I was stoked that I got to have some food. But um, found it really interesting what he had to say about uh, you know his transition from Skull Candy over to the grill business and how he took. Uh, company has basically been stagnant for however many years and people just kind of accepted this is the way it is, it's propane and that's that's it and said how can we make this better and basically innovated it and made it a premium thing again and made it a almost lifestyle and make it so any guy on the block is the grill guy. Um, you know and even in his own house he admitted that he was never very good at food and now you know it's he's he's the grill guy you know he makes everything amazing and his wife really appreciates it and it's kind of changed his life and same thing with hashtag chat and the people in our office that have picked up the grills it's been uh, great experience. So I thought that was, you know, real. I like that one too because anytime we can get out of the studio and go outside and eat, while and get paid to do it, oh, yeah. I'm in on that. Big fan. I yeah. know what yours is going to be. I shouldn't <laughs> even ask. But uh, just for fun, uh, Lex, what was your favorite episode? Oh man. Well, out of all, you liked of them, all? them, I liked them all. Um, <laughs> I helped produce them all. But um, I have been waiting to get a Bachelor person on this show for like two years, and I've always been pushing for Caitlin Bristow. And we finally got her and Sean B. They went on a golf date on the show, one of their last dates, and they're just really fun and energetic and so different from a lot of our guests. So it 
it was really cool to have that one was unique for me because I didn't know what to expect <laughs> I, I, I would call myself a fringe fan yeah. I love Chris Harrison as mm -hmm. we all know but I'm a fringe fan so I only knew them really after the show from seeing them every time I'd buy groceries on some tabloid <laughs> so I didn't know what to expect but they came in they were really fun yeah and it's three years removed you know they've had time outside of it and they still like to get out and play golf they're not great but that's not a like qualifier to be on our show so here they were <laughs> <laughs> it's not a qualifier to actually be sitting on the panel as well right. <laughs> so I, I actually one of the moments that stuck out to me too was the Mohawk Warrior, Bryce Kenny was on. Oh, yeah. And I liked him for a lot of reasons. Number one, he's probably the nicest guy we've had that's in a celebrity type. Mm -hmm. And I liked it too, because he was, he, we didn't go into this on the show too much, but he was sitting in a boring job one day, sound familiar? And <laughs> decided, you know what? This is not my dream job. My dream job is I want to get into auto sports and particularly monster trucks yeah. and the next thing you know he's the mohawk warrior and then the part i loved about that show was he was pretty good at the rv uh the radio rc cars almost yeah. as good as he was at driving the actual I, I, was, I, was, I was actually not very good yeah. he was very good i not so good so that was a, a a moment when not only was it fun to race him but um we had a lot of damage done to the set that day you're the only guy i can remember waiting for my dial-up to actually connect to read what you were doing on yeah. AOL and then ESPN. That's how long I've been around, because I remember like in the morning surfing the internet and ha having this long phone cord and try I used to do this thing called the Daily Links and, and would just go from site to site and I would have to have TV on because it would take so long to go from like ESPN to SI to whatever the, the site. It's a real commitment. It really did, and, and I would need to, so I would watch like ER, I would watch 90210, <laughs> I would just, whatever was on in the mornings, The White Shadow, all these shows that were syndicated because I needed something to do when I was just waiting for things to download. And all the, not all the uh, millennials are now Googling that right now, like White Shadow, <laughs> Ken Howard, what is that? The millennials don't know how well they have it. <laughs> they really don't. Like the ability to watch an NBA game on your iPhone, hey, if you told me that 20 years ago, my head would have exploded. Uh, let's move to brisket. You want, you want to try a little brisket? Oh, yeah, I do. Because brisket's amazing. Now, now, brisket is one of the most intimidating cuts of meat to cook. Oh. Every brisket is different, and it takes 8, 10, 12 thing. hours. So this has been on for 9 or 10 hours. Uh, we put some salt and some pepper, a little bit of coffee rub, a little bit of prime, prime rib rub. Put on the Traeger for about 3 hours on smoke. When it got to 165 degrees, we wrapped it, turned it up. And it's done now. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Could you eat that whole thing, Rory? If I gave if I gave you two pieces of white bread? Clearly. Uh. <laughs> oh. So. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I get to answer that challenge. No Rory problem. in in 2017 cooked 279 tri tips. On purpose? Absolutely. Oh. It's impressive, right? It's like a tri-tip a day almost. <laughs> and every single one was right. amazing. I don't have a knife. Okay, all right, let's so see. I'm, I'm going to go. Hey, tell, tell you what. Let, let, let me, let me yeah, help just you. Just slice that up for me right there, now. There, there, there we go. I don't have a fork. Ow! Oh, I'm just kidding. No, you don't. <laughs> work with me. Put, put your fork right there. there we put go. your fork. Oh, put your fork. There we go. There we go. That's teamwork, right? Oh, yeah, that is teamwork. Oh, that's good. <laughs> How is it? Not good. Cut that some more of that for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That is, that is flavor. A brisket is so hard to cook. When you put a Traeger in someone's hands and suddenly they can easily create the world's best brisket, it's life changing. That's so good. There you go. Oh my gosh. Keep talking. I'm you, you want to you take a little, little time out to. Uh, to I'm going to need a moment here. To, to, <laughs> to, to, <laughs> a little <laughs> privacy. You can, so do you, are you out there a lot, like together? Because you're in a pretty good spot. In, we do. We in kind of Tennessee. met golfing. That was one of our dates on the show. Or I ended up naked on the golf course. <laughs> Happens. Yeah. He did. Was, it uh, was actually so funny because I was beating him at golf. Believe it or not. Uh, you were. Uh, no. All right. Yeah. We'll we'll let her take that. <laughs> <laughs> the proof is on TV. People can YouTube it. Yeah. And um. And it was like we played truth or dare because what else do you do on The Bachelorette but get naked? Um, yeah. And so we were Every like. Every scene ends in naked truth or dare, no matter what yeah. it is. Like, let's go to a cooking class and then do naked truth or dare. Right. Um, huh. But I was like, okay, tr if 
dare like you have to like putt naked or something like that. This guy told me it was laundry day. Oh, it was. This is no. Let me tell the story. He let me took tell the off story. his pants and he was wearing well, long john underwear. <laughs> so that he didn't get un panty lines. It could so have been he didn't have underwear lines. All right, here's the deal. My pants that I wear are pretty tight. There's right? a young girl in the audience. Okay. <laughs> so the boxers that I like had on the show, they kept on like rolling up my thighs, and so there was like a line. And I was like, okay. And then she got me these golf pants I had to wear on the date, and they were like skin tight. So I was like, ah, oh, I don't want these big, so big lines. Spandex. So I wore like uh, man spanks. Workout like, yeah, Under Armour like tights. Like tights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On go, we'll go. You ready? Okay, that sounds good. On your mark, get set. <laughs> oh God. Oh, oh. I'm gonna try to do the jump, you ready? This right. is gonna be a disaster. Oh, no! Oh, God. Carnage! I expect a little better from, from you. A little Big Bertha fan there. I'm gonna try that one more time. My we gotta do that. Get that out of the way. Oh, God. Bryce, grab Let my move. controller. No, Let's get a good Big Bertha jump out of this. <laughs> you, look alive, front row. Here we go. Look alive. Here we go. Stand by over here. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> Last one. <laughs> yeah, get the Mohawk Warrior up yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. I'll put on a show while you do whatever you're doing. <laughs> oh. I saved the last for last. Oh, that's Jeff very kind of you. That's Jeff probably the Mark. nicest intro you've ever given. Our me. executive producer of Cowboy Live. Good season, partner. Yeah. We kind of flew by. We didn't even know how many we did. I, I was uh, completely stunned when we realized how many shows we did or didn't do this year. I yeah. thought the number was slightly different. Yeah. But that's okay. I don't, I'm not ashamed to Do you think that. it was more or less? I thought we did more. It felt yeah. like we did more. It did. Yeah. It's uh, Every show is different. So, yeah. you know, it's hard to it's hard to say what's going to happen on this show, and that's kind of the well, point. That's the live show, no script. What could possibly go wrong? Can you believe that we've done four seasons of this no, thing? No, I know. And there's big news to announce because I don't know if you heard. You no. were in some other meetings, but I was in a meeting this morning with uh, – really not a very important cast, and it was decided that Callaway Live has been renewed for season five. Season We're back. five? And do you know what season I five means? I can't believe that. You know what season five means? In it usually means industry. syndication. Syndication, so that's when the real money comes in. Oh, yes. So this is where our equal ownership stakes yeah, can of the show it. are going to potentially lead us to great riches. That would be great. You could afford a different shirt. Not, not that it's a bad shirt, but a lot of people have that shirt on in well, the which, end which, show. Well, we thought we'd have a nice team shirt this year. We thought that was a good thing. The camera union, who's been a real kind of pain in the rear all year long, just refused to wear them as kind of a silent protest. Where, if you notice, the inside control room group was proud and happy to wear the shirt because it's really harmony and unity inside the control room. At well, all times. It, it was a great season, and it I'm was. so proud of the crew that works on this. Yeah. Obviously, every, every week we do the show, we pack the audience in here yeah and especially am am grateful to you and the work that you do and um two of us working together to to bring this show to to you yeah every single what, when do we do this tuesdays tuesdays at uh at six o'clock on the west coast nine on the pacific but a couple other people who weren't up on stage who also deserve some special recognition uh nate carlson who does a great job with all the graphics yep. johnny rodriguez who pioneered the graphic look and created the most complicated keynote in the history of mankind which is why we can't do a lot with these monitors penny Nutzel, who is kind of the audience say, yard barker for yep. the, the whole company letting people know takes care of all the uh, he's called a yard barker yard barker okay of the refreshment world because you know we've learned the jokes are funnier when people have a little refreshment prior to Absolutely coming in the studio true. we've had a bunch of people help us steven ethan yeah pete the pete. list goes on and on yeah. this is definitely a homegrown show mm -hmm. every single person that works on this show works here right here at callaway no hired guns yeah and one of the things i love about this show before we we sign off for season four is mm -hmm. um when we first began the show we thought it would be really cool to let you get 
a little bit of a taste of what it's like to be here and all the different types of people that we have the privilege of meeting by virtue of being a part of the Callaway world. And that has been true um, from the very first guest, Dick Enberg, yeah. to our very last guest of, of season four. Not only are they people that we've gotten to know, but people that we've gotten to respect. And I think one of the really neat things for me personally is I've I've gotten I've gotten to use this show as a vehicle to meet some of my heroes, right? And not just meet them, but become friends with them. Well, that was that was the goal of the show. The goal of the show, where there for was a list of people, people that we wanted to meet. We don't. We Jeff we and I can't meet have, people in real life. No. So we have to create a show. Correct. For all of us on the show to get to meet people. Yeah, it's and really pretty amazing. Happened. We were able to pull that off and we fool people for four years now into our fifth season. I mean, we have to kind of sit down and go through the notebooks. But our last guest of season four, uh, thankfully, our good buddy Irving Azoff, who was on season one, has been kind enough to. I mean, he's gotten us probably almost a dozen guests over the the, the four seasons. But being able to, to have Vince Gill here, who's out touring with the Eagles right now, and to be able to have him play some live music in the studio, uh, that's just the perfect way to end the season. Well, and then we great, mucked it up with this show. And that was a great day when Vince came, spent the entire day with us, hit balls, got fit, and then came in and really played us out for yeah. the end of the season. Yeah. Great job. And little did we know we would be renewed for season five when I mean, Vince played us out. We thought that might be our swan song. Yeah, it, it kind of felt like a fitting way to go out, but uh, I guess we're going to have to top it. So uh, in the uh, immortal words of Jason Finley, we'll just have to uh, top the story. Well, thank you for all the hard work. Thank you. Thank you for watching and being with us. And we'll be back for season five with great guests again. And maybe the show might be the same, might be different. Who knows? Yeah. But we know that we'll be trying hard to make sure that you have as much fun as we do uh, on Cowie Live. So thanks for everything, and we're going to let Vince play us out. Yep. Someone was kind enough to request one of my songs <laughs> during the break. This is a old song. Sure have a pretty smile. It sure has been a while since I felt your touch. You got the sweetest way think about you every day. I miss you so much And my pretty little Adrienne Are you lonesome tonight? My pretty little Adrienne I find you and it all feels right So soft and innocent, the sweetest night I ever spent was being held in your embrace. You're such a gentle soul, it's killing me to know when will I see your face? And my pretty little Adriana, are you lonesome? And my pretty little Adriana, I'll find you when it all feels right. And my pretty little Adriana, are you lonesome tonight?